Good morning, second graders. I hope you are having a fabulous day so far. Make sure you've done extra math, and now that, or once it is done, you may listen to our story. So before I read the story, we have a fun thing starting today for math. Now, I have included the Google link, and you can complete it that way, or I've also included snapshots of the two clues that you're going to do for today, so you can print them out if you want. I will walk you through during the math block of how to do that and what I'm even talking about, but you will be needing to figure out where the turkey went. All right, so yesterday we read a fun book called The Turkey and the Monkey, and I told you that it reminded me of a few other books that we've read. So it reminded me of The Tortoise and the Hare. It also reminded me of the book Tops and Bottoms that we read back at the beginning of the year. And these are called trickster tales because one of the characters thinks they're tricky, but it's normally the other one who wins out or is more clever. So in this case, the monkey was the one who thought he was super clever and he thought he was going to outsmart the turtle. But in fact, it was the turtle who outsmarted the monkey. I also told you yesterday that this was a tale from the Philippines. It said right there. And today we're going to read another trickster tale and it's called Jabuti. And this is a trickster tale from the Amazon. And so this is a different country, a different place. The Amazon's not a country, but it's a place. Jabuti the tortoise, a trickster tale from the Amazon. I'm wondering why so many of these trickster tales have a turtle as a character. That's interesting to me. The tortoise and the hare, that's a turtle. The turtle and the mo monkey, that's another one. And then Djibouti, the tortoise. That's three stories where a trickster tale. There's also one called Anansi the Spider, and that's a whole series of books. And Anansi, those are kind of trickster tales as well. On the back are other books that this author has written. And it looks like he likes to take tales from different countries and write about them. I have this book. All right, Djibouti the Tortoise, a trickster tale from the Amazon, written by Gerald McDermott, illustrated as well. Djibouti the Tortoise played a song on his flute. His shell was smooth and shiny, and his song was sweet. His music wove through the tangled vines and floated above the treetops. All the creatures of the rainforest listened to his song. For some, Djibouti's song was sour. Jaguar could remember when Djibouti tricked him into chasing his own tail. Lizard could remember when Djibouti tricked him into giving Djibouti a ride on his back. Tapir could remember when Djibouti tricked him into a tug of war with a whale. But the birds of the air loved Djibouti's music, and they sang when he played. All except Vulture, who could not sing at all. He was jealous of Djibouti and waited for the day when he could eat the little tortoise. So if you know anything about vultures, this is where that thinking about what you're reading comes into play, right? We always want to think about what we're reading. So vultures only eat things that are dead. So he can't wait for the day that Djibouti is dead and he can eat it. That's not a very nice thing to wish. There came a time when all the birds of the air were invited to a festival in heaven. The king of heaven called them together to sing, to rejoice and to receive his blessing. When Djibouti saw the great gathering of the birds, he wanted to go too. Why can't he go? What do you know about turtles? I want to play my flute for the king of heaven, he said. Vulture laughed at him. I may not be able to make music like you, said Vulture, but I can spread my wings and soar all the way to heaven. Take me with you, Djibouti pleaded. Vulture saw his chance. Climb on my back, little friend, he said. Anyone have any predictions? I don't have a good feeling about this. Remember what Vulture wants. 
what his wish has been. I'm scared for tortoise. Vulture spread his dark wings and rose up into the air. Djibouti held tight to Vulture's feathers as they flew high above the treetops. The dense forest and the great rivers stretched far below. They had almost reached heaven when Vulture suddenly swooped and turned upside down. Djibouti lost hold of Vulture's feathers and slipped off his back. All right, what's your prediction? Remember, you always want to look at everything on the page. So my prediction first is, oh no, Tortoise is going to fall to his death. But then I see something in our picture that reminds me of yesterday's story. I see a river at the bottom of the page. So my prediction is that Tortoise falls in the river. Let's see. Djibouti went tumbling down through the sky. The earth came rushing toward him and he cried out, twigs and bushes, flowers and trees, move aside, make way for me. My prediction was not right. Sometimes predictions aren't right. All of the plants and trees of the forest spread apart to make way for Djibouti, and he had forgotten to call to the rock. Djibouti came down on it with a crack, and his smooth, shiny shell broke into pieces. I'm worried for him. At that moment, the music of the festival in heaven stopped. The king of heaven looked down and saw Vulture joining the other birds. Where's Djibouti? asked the king of heaven. Vulture shrugged. How would I know? he answered. Djibouti wanted to play for me, and you offered to bring him here, said the king of heaven sternly. Tell me where he is. Vulture turned away from the king of heaven and hid his head beneath his wing. The king of heaven commanded the birds to search for Djibouti. The birds filled the sky, flying high over the treetops, swooping low through the tangled vines, looking for the little tortoise. Do you see him? Toucan, macaw, and hummingbird found Djibouti. He was laying helplessly in the forest. His beautiful shell was broken. The birds gathered the pieces and patched him together. When they were done, Djibouti played a song of thanks for them. And where the birds had touched Djibouti, they each took a new color. Toucan got a red and yellow beak, macaw bright orange feathers, and hummingbird an emerald green belly. Vulture stayed the same dull color. He still can't sing. Djibouti the tortoise plays on his flute. His music weaves through the tangled vines and floats above the treetops. His shell may be cracked and patched, but his song is sweet, at least to some. The end. I like that story. Not only is it a trickster tale, but it also kind of gives a reason for why the toucan and hummingbird and macaw are bright and why the turtle's shell looks cracked. So at the beginning of the story, you'll notice it looks smooth. And then at the end of the story, it looks like we know turtle shells to look. So it gives an explanation for why a turtle shell looks like that and why bird feathers look like that. I like stories like that. All right, I hope you enjoyed the story as much as I did. We will read another trickster tale tomorrow. I hope you have fun with math and reading and writing. There's also Spanish, it's new. The in-person kids have been taking Spanish for a few weeks now and her Canvas page is up and running now so you can take Spanish as well. There's a picture of a hand with a bunch of different flags in it that I posted in the Spanish section. Those are all the different countries that speak Spanish. There's a lot of them. I wonder if you know how many do. All right, have a good day.